At Campaign Zero, we believe we can live in a world where the police do not kill people. There's an easy way to stop it. Arrest the cops. Charge the cops. Charge all the cops. Not just some of them. Ferguson, my life was forever changed with the senseless killing of Mike Brown Jr. at the hands of Ferguson police. I was there the night he was killed, and I've been in the streets ever since fighting for justice and making sure that you have no choice but to listen to us. No justice, no peace! My name is Janetta Elzey, a proud St. Louis native, protester, organizer, and co-founder of Campaign Zero. 2020 was the second deadliest year for police violence on record. According to our research at Campaign Zero, 1,127 people died from police violence last year. I can't breathe. The deadliest year was 2018, with 1,145 deaths. We're the ones getting killed. We're the ones getting shot. It's really so sad. Cops have continued to kill us without consequence, even when the world has watched their crimes, and they are rarely, if ever, held accountable. Breonna Taylor murder is still roaming around free. My prayers out to Jacob Blake and their family. What we have been trying to tell you is they don't protect and serve. They are the harm we are trying to escape. Why does it always have to get to a point where we see the guns fire? In 2014, many protesters felt unheard, unseen, and I know not all of us were given a platform to speak our truths. So I'm fighting for and with them, those who show up when the cameras aren't rolling. We're fighting for the more just future Black people deserve. We have been left behind for over 400 years in this country. It's beyond time we get our due. Students have been at the center of every civil rights movement in this nation. In Missouri, the Mizzou Concerned Student 1950 protests were among the first to list their demands. And we haven't given up yet. If we want change, our generation has to step up right now. We need a coalition of people willing to call out racism and oppression. Being a celebrity, being an NBA player, don't exclude me from no conversation. From students to athletes to elected officials, use your voice, use your power, and your platform to make a real difference to help others see what we've been through and listen to our truth. Let's do it. Let's march. No justice! No peace! Last year, we had months of protests and allies joining us in this reckoning on racial justice. It is unbelievable to see what is happening in almost every single major city in this country. And that's nice, but it's not enough. The truth is, no single person or administration can save us. The movement for true justice has to be bottom up, not top down. Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, or George Floyd. What happened to them would never happen to my three daughters. White supremacy, it's an ideology. So when I finally did see it, how do I be a part of helping? Rooting out white supremacy starts with white people recognizing, learning about, and dismantling their own privilege and power. There has to be an uncomfortable element in the discourse for anything to change. And sometimes that means knowing when it's not your turn to speak, using your privilege to pass the mic to folks who look like me. I think we continue to have these uncomfortable conversations. Before you can change what you do, you kind of have to change what you say. This is not a post-racial America. And I'm not here to deliver platitudes that give you the impression that it is. We need action from white people in this country to step up and use their privilege to actually sacrifice for a better future. That means doing more than marching. We need you to disrupt with us. Sacrifice your privilege for the cause. Because we cannot keep saving the country that refuses to save us. If this reckoning is real, then demanding equality and equity for black people and black lives should not be seen as risky. So I'm asking, what are you willing to risk? <laughs>